In this video we're going to input material properties in the RCB model. Firstly we'll input material types. We'll then assign these material types to the structural element types, so for the column wall beam slab types. And then we will assign the column wall beam slab types to the individual elements within the model. Going to RCB and working on the model that we were working on previously, the first thing that we do is we input our material types or our concrete grades. So this is done under the input tab, material types, material properties. Here we see that we have five different material types defined. So 32 MPA concrete going up to 65. And then we also have this 40 MPA at transfer. So by default, the program will put in 32 MPA concrete. So that will always be the default type one. And I've put in the additional ones 40 to 65 MPA. So all of the relevant properties here are input. Now we see two, a few columns here. Um, E, the elastic modulus and gigapascals for SLB PTD, but we also see the one that is used in RCB. So what these columns mean is that the um, basically the RCB one, this is the elastic modulus that will be used in the RCB model, and this one refers to the elastic modulus that will be used in the SLB and PTD softwares why this is important, why this is set up now. If we're doing a batch export and run, for example, this all needs to be set up. So going to the transfer floor, talking about why we've done what we've done, uh, we've made the transfer floor three times stiffer. So for the RCB model, we've stiffened the elastic modulus by three. So this 35 gigapascals will be one, approximately 107 gigapascals in the RCB model. Why we did this, we wanted to, simu to simulate the effects of a construction stage analysis. So basically each floor in the model being built individually in the analysis run to give us a true distribution of the load, the loading. We want to sim simulate this effect without actually running a construction stage analysis. So if we were to hit run now, it will just basically the entire structure would come into existence in one go and we want to have a more realistic distribution of the reactions. So hence why we made this transfer floor stiffer. <coughs> so in RCB we wanted it 107, however if we were to do a cracked section check of deflections in uh, the SLB software for example, we don't want to use the 107 value, we want this 35.7 gigapascals. So that's why we have a separate um, elastic modulus for the SLB PTD softwares and a separate one for RCB. Now I'll just show an example of how we fill in the table, it's very easy. We just put in some label. And we put in the the F dash C value in Cape. Yay! <coughs> and the program will fill all of this out for us, and we can modify it as well if we want to. Now the uh, the unit weight. This is what is used to calculate the structure's self weight. Defaults to 25 kilonewtons per meter cube, but we can change it. So we won't use 80 MPa in this model. So I will just delete this row and we'll hit OK. So with the material types input, we then need to assign these material types to the various column wall beam slab types. So this is done in the same tab under types and we'll hit column. So for simplicity, we've just made column type 1, 2, 3, 4 match material types 1, 2, 3, 4 exactly. So with the materials input, we just select them from these drop downs. And similarly for walls, I've done the same thing. Type wall type one two three four matches column type one two three four. Beams, I won't be using anything other than thirty two MPA, so I've just used um, beam type one is thirty two MPA. And for the slabs, <coughs> we have thirty two MPA for type slab type one. Slab type two is linked to material type five of forty MPA transfer. So hitting OK. The next step is to assign these various column wall beam slab types to the individual elements. How we would do this manually is if we select a column, for example, we change its type property. So here we see everything defaults to type one 
which is 32 MPa, assigned to material type 1, 32 MPa. Or we could have a look at it by coloring by type. So we see column type 1 and the label of the material associated to column type 1. So one way to do one way to assign the types would be just to do it in plan. So start selecting the individual elements and uh, modifying the types. The much quicker and more user-friendly way is to use the material per level tool. So if we press this, we'll have a look at what it is. So basically this is used to one, assign the, the, the types to the various structural elements and also to review them. So here we see the levels as we've defined. We also have the master slaves that we've defined as well. So master slaves being um, the same geometry that is copied up. So we see everything defaults to type 1. Uh, we see also an asterisk here, meaning that there's a variation in the, uh, the types for this particular level. So we can use this to very quickly start changing the types. So for example, if I wanted to adjust the concrete grade for all of the columns on um, basement 4, I simply do it as so. So by default, as soon as we change the properties of a master level, it will adjust all of the concrete types for all of the slaves. However, the master-slave uh, relationship, it links everything on that particular floor except for the types. Why we, why we unlink the types is that, for example, if we're doing a column design, and we didn't know what we wanted our, um, well basically we didn't know what floor we were going to be changing our concrete grade at, we didn't want to have to ungroup and regroup this master slave. So the program lets us, like so, modify the, um, modify the types of the various structural elements within the master slave relationship. So for the first pass, when we change the concrete grade on the master level 5, it just copied that change up to all of the slaves, but we then, we're allowed to go into the individual slave floors in the material types for level window and adjust the properties. Now keep in mind these will be the lower limits for our column schedule, uh, and this is discussed in more detail in the column design and schedule video. Now uh, if we just go to this level 1 slab, we'll just leave walls, we probably change them as well, but we'll just leave them as 32 MPa, but the, the slab will change this to the type 2 40 MPa transfer and we'll leave the rest of the slabs at, um, at the type 1 32 MPa. So this dash just means there's no beams on these particular floors. So hitting OK, that's all assigned, and then we can start seeing our changes. So. Level 4, we made it 40 MPa in the columns, and if we wanted to double check that, we could have a look at it here. So we see that everything is has uh, column type 2 with material type 40 MPa assigned to it. And going to the level 1 transfer, if we color the slabs by type, we can see that basically everything is type 2 40 MPa transfer. We also see that there's another slab type that is uh, basically assigned in this model. So slab type 1 with 30, 32 MPa material is assigned, but it is not used. And if we hit this button, we just go back to the slab types window if we wanted to review it. So in summary, what we did to assign materials per per the various structural elements is first we had to input the structural materials themselves, so the structural material types. We then had to assign the material types to the relevant column wall beam slab types. And then the final step was to change the type property per individual structural element. Now this was done very quickly using the material types per level window. And if desired, we could then go into individual areas and start modifying the, 
the uh, individual types per structural element. So there could be a, a basically a variation of the types within one floor.